Ruddy Bull's Hard Miles and Harder Lessons, September, has come to the Western Mountains. For the Hayes family, September means elk camp, where we pack up the entire family and spend nearly an entire month in the mountains. It's something we all look forward to. No cell service, no internet, no commitments other than the miles in the mountains and the elk that call this place home. A home that we're fortunate enough to visit, if only for a short time each year. All right, we are finally at elk camp. We got here really late yesterday evening and just had enough time to throw the tent up before it got dark. We have stuff sitting around everywhere today, so I'm gonna try to get that organized. Since we already got our firewood, Clay's already out in the woods hunting elk. So it's day one. It's very dry, very warm. We're just gonna ease our way up here and just see what we can see. We can, we'll probably end up climbing up on this other ridge and looking over the other side. It's like some fresh tracks coming down through here. But it's about to get to that time when the, when the wind gets real squirrely and it gets hard to get close to anything. Following fresh sign is a great way to find elk, but you must be stealthy and have a good bit of luck on your side. Some people believe that animals like elk live purely on instinct, responding only to environmental cues. But I've spent enough time with them to know that they are much, much more than that. They know their home, the currents of wind. They know when, where, and how to move to avoid danger. This is the original problem that human beings have faced since before time. How to outmaneuver our food and feed ourselves. So I just had a cow at a calf come off this little ridge here, but the wind's blowing the wrong way. They ended up smelling us and turning around. So I think we're gonna try to get to the Wind of side of where they came and hope that more elk come that same way. So we've worked our way up this ridge about as far as I want to go because they, there's a good bend there in 150 200 yards up here. It gets closer to, uh, I don't know, maybe four or five. We might ease up a little bit, see if we can find a better spot. Elk often bed in areas that are incredibly difficult to approach because of the swirly winds. And it's often best to wait for the more predictable winds of early morning or late evening. Big cat. 
cow and a calf down here below us. And up on this face here, it's a strong uphill thermal. But as soon as you drop off this thing and get off the top, the wind gets all kind of squirrely down in there. Either got to get real lucky or wait till the sun goes down a little bit. And you start getting a down canyon thermal. You can get down below them and wait on them.
is what elk hunt is all about right there. You hike your ass off for five days, miles after miles, all for one moment like that right there. That lasted 30 seconds. When he came over, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't very far. It was probably only 25 yards, but he was facing straight on to me. And then when he turned, I had no. I had no chance to draw. But that was fun. On the western public lands that most of us hunt, opportunities don't come easy or often. And more often than not, they vanish like an unfinished dream, leaving you longing for conclusion but with no way to recapture what was lost. You simply try, and try again. smell you it's over and you're not catching up with them um, so he's there 300 yards away by now that was just him bugling um, so we're gonna head back this way maybe cross over and see if we can't find another one bugling he seems like he's pretty hot this morning so maybe we can find another one
September days are long, up at 4.30 and rarely in bed before 10. 7 to 14 mile days, day after day. After a while, that September grind will wear you down. But try is all we have and all we can do, and so we persist. This bull bugled four or five times this morning and then just shut down. I haven't heard him probably in, I don't know, 45 minutes or an hour maybe. So we're just kind of still hunting our way down through this bench, this mahogany bench. We just cut their tracks, which they, they seem to be going up right now. And so I think we're just going to back out this way downwind and try to cut up above them. It's kind of a steep climb, but if we can get above him and I can hear him bugle, that would be good. Then we can work down on him, but I don't know, he may be done by now. So the tracks go off that way, but I go around and I try to get on top of him. This is one of those things when you get halfway through and you're like, son of a bitch, this was a bad idea. But you're too invested to go back.
sun's shining and it's raining. So it's almost 11 o'clock. Those elk are up into this next drainage here. There's a bedding area in there that they really like to use kind of up high in the drainage. Um, if this if this was a different animal and he was more interested in my calls, I might try to slip around on top and get in on him and then bugle at him, but he hasn't responded to any of my bugles hardly. He's just, I'm just pushing him. And I've gotten really tight in close to him and he's just not even, not interested at all. And so I think my best chance at killing one of these elk is just to dig in and wait on them to get up and feed their way down this drainage this evening. And then once the thermals start going down, maybe hopefully we can get on this flat with them and slip in there and kill one. So we've got probably seven hours till that happens. So it's nap time. We're being a lazy butt. Billy! What are you doing? I wish y'all could smell this bacon. It smells so good. Inside the tent. Almost a water for us. I'm not gonna make some grits in just a minute. I'm gonna get this bacon off here that I'm burning. Sun, so we can see it. That is really cool. Big one. Oh, that's really cool. Looks like there's some bats in here. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta let it go. She's fixing to sit down on a rock, and there's a fossil right there. I get this one. Very, very cool fin. Cool find. All that. We found a lot of fossils though. So it sounds like the, these elk are on the move. I can't really tell where he's at because he's being super quiet. And this bull, he's a really nice one. He's on a hot cow. So yeah, he's like bird dogging her all day, just on her ass. I'd seriously doubt I'm going to be able to call him off of her, but maybe we can get in the middle of them and get a shot at something. Mm. 
Go in a little while. Love Good. you, ma'am. Love you, buddy. Have fun. You can help. You have to help Dad track it out down the night. Maybe if he gets one. Here. Ooh, are you gonna get to call him in? Mm-hmm. Can you put this in my? Can you help do it? Let me do it. one practice. Let me hear you. Let her up, Tater Chip. Heck yeah. Good job, buddy. Can you buddy. put this in my pack? Take it. You see how, which, which foot do you think this is? Which side? Back. Which side? Back this side. No, so it's this side. Just, this yeah. side. So you got tracks that are in a pattern like this, a zigzag. Mm -hmm. So this is left. Right, and left. There should be one over here. All right, left. This is a good one right here. Rocks, so, rocks and do it. Look here. You see how it's deep, and then mm -hmm. the the dirt fans out in front. Mm -hmm. See how he's kicked the dirt out. Yeah. So we know this elk was moving fast, but that's one of the indications of it. And also here, here. Yep. Also, you Left, see how far right. apart they are. Uh -huh. Keep on going. Here. So we were working our way up this ridge and bumped a spike. And so uh, right off the bat, this has turned into an impromptu tracking session. And Finn is doing pretty good. So, so go ahead until you can find no more tracks. This side. Okay. This side. Right here. Yeah. And there's another track right here. Yeah. And it's this foot from the leg. Okay. Looking at this track right here, what's different about that than, than the other tracks? It's deeper. It's deeper, but, but what part of it's deeper? This side. Yeah. So it's and turning it, that way. That's right. He puts his foot in there and he pushes down with yeah, his he inside goes like toe. That. Yeah. So, so he's coming straight up here, and right here, he makes a decision to turn left, and you can see that in his track. See? And then one there. Yep. There. Yep. There. Good. Well, that's the Paradise Bowl. We can bugle down in there and see if you can get something to respond to. Right there. Yep. Just pull him down in there and let her go. <laughs> Nothing. I think if they were in there, we'd see them out in the meadow and something. We're going to go into the Paradise Bowl? Hmm. <laughs> mm -mm. Why? Because there ain't no elk in there. If there was a bull bugle in there, we might dive off, but not, not without seeing or hearing any. How many um, mounds do we have to um, cross until we get back to the house? We just go right down this valley here, and we'll be back. It's all downhill, most of it anyway. Are we going to go anywhere else? Yeah, we still got about an hour and a half of, day of uh, shooting light left. I kind of want to go to that cave up there. 
Yeah, it looks tempting, doesn't it? But I don't reckon I want to climb up there. All right, let's keep moving. You don't want to climb up that thing? No, I don't. I can't. Ain't no elk in that cave. Yeah, of course there's no elk in the cave. Two grouse in these trees somewhere, but I, I took my eyes off of them. Now I can't find them. Oh, there you go. Ah. There's the other one right there. that grouse fly 70 yards with an arrow through the middle of him. He's right down here somewhere, hoping to find it. Very nice. We'll have that for lunch. I just got done plucking it. Now I'm gonna go ask my dad what he wants me to deal with it. Although we would chase elk around the mountains for over 20 days, close calls and memories is all we would leave with. Some may watch this video and see only that we left with tags in our pockets. They'll see only the failures, mistakes, the could have beens. But for me, anyhow, hunting isn't just about filling a tag. It's about the entire experience. And having an unfilled tag just means I get to dust off the old flintlock and come back for another try when the mercury bottoms out and the big herds gather on their wintering grounds.